As we await that, revelations about the destruction of Hillary Clinton's emails despite legal orders to preserve them that came before the destruction took place, sparking comparisons now to Watergate. You know, it's, uh, it was a long time ago when I was still a boy that I remember a, a president who deleted 18 and a half minutes of tape and was held accountable for that. And now Hillary Clinton deleted almost 18,000 emails. That doesn't look like politics, folks. That looks like obstruction. And the American people are sick and tired of it. So the judge, Andrew Napolitano, has been on this story from the very beginning. Fox News senior judicial analyst. And judge, great to see you here today. Uh, thank you, Bill. Uh, fair comparison to 1973 or not? Yes, it's a fair comparison. If you're talking about the seriousness of the information destroyed and the amount of information destroyed, <clears throat> what happened... Uh, at the hands of people working for or at the direction of Mrs. Clinton was far worse than an 18 and a half minute uh, gap on President Nixon's internal office recording equipment. Okay, so the subpoena was filed here's, here's, to, to preserve the records. Right. And the, then after that happened, the devices were destroyed. Yes. We're the emails were deleted. Yes. We're, What's the timeline? We are, well, the timeline is the Committee on Benghazi and the Committee on House Administration serve a letter to preserve to Secretary Clinton. In the Benghazi case, she was still the Secretary of State saying we are ordering you to preserve all emails and all documents that have anything to do with your service as Secretary of State and your stewardship of the consulate in Benghazi because we're going to investigate it. Then she leaves office. <clears throat> then these things disappear. Then a subpoena is served. Then we find that there were no emails in the State Department because she had all of them diverted through her husband's server in Chappaqua, and the rest is history. But what we learned last week on Friday of Labor Day weekend, <clears throat> it's starting to sound like her now, sorry. <laughs> Maybe you're what, allergic. What, what we learned on Friday of Labor Day weekend was that the FBI knew about the destruction with a sledgehammer of two blackberries that the FBI knew that a server had been wiped clean professionally by a service called bleach bit which means you cannot resurrect it after bleach bit has been applied to it and what we learned is that a laptop used by one of Mrs. Clinton's senior aides was put in the US mail and never arrived at the location so you, to you, which you're it laying out a case of obstruction of justice I'm that, laying out, that, that's what you think I'm laying out two cases obstruction of justice by people working for Mrs. Clinton, either directly or contractors that she hired, and the FBI being told to look the other way in the face of this obstruction of justice. All right, stop there. Why would the FBI do that? Because the FBI was restrained in its interrogation of Mrs. Clinton. They never called a grand jury. They never got a subpoena. They never got a search warrant. In the documents that they released on Friday, I counted five statements by the FBI in there saying, we couldn't find this, we couldn't get that. It's their own fault that they couldn't find it so because they didn't have available to them the law enforcement tools that they should have because somebody in the White House stopped them. You think that's true? Yes, I do. And I believe you, you, that a lot you, You're saying that James Comey, the head of the FBI, Listen to an order from the White House not to pursue. I don't a know if it case. was him personally, but he's certainly responsible for what happened. And I know that there are FBI agents profoundly disturbed with the outcome of this case because they saw serious evidence of crimes which are not being prosecuted. That does harm to the public safety, harm to the rule of law, and in their case, it does harm to the reputation of the FBI. No grand jury? Correct. No subpoenas? Correct. No search warrants? Correct. Unheard of. Where does that leave you? It, it leads me to the conclusion that at the outset of the investigation, a decision was made by someone somewhere that it would end up exonerating Mrs. Clinton. Mm. Because the evidence of guilt, two cases, failure to keep state secrets secret, espionage, obstruction of justice, interfering with a government procedure. The evidence of guilt in both cases is overwhelming. We're seeing no indictments and no charges of anybody. Does it end now? I don't know. I, I doubt what, that Congressman... What would, what would 
keep it going other than a special prosecutor, which you know will not happen under Correct. this Correct. I, I also don't think a Congressman Chaffetz, and my hat is off to him because he's shoveling against the tide, so to speak, will not be able to get to the bottom of this before Election Day. Try as hard as he is apparently yes. doing. Thank you, Judge. Andrew Palatano here in studio. Strong stuff. Yes, it is. Mm. Martha.